What's up everyone? My name is Yvette Young and I am here visiting Sweetwater, hanging out at the world's largest pedal display. Let's do some pedal shopping. Okay, so I usually have two pedal boards that I work off of primarily. I have one for live shows and I have more of like studio tool pedals. I just think some pedals are more conducive to being used as a studio tool and some of the pedals are just easier to use live. I like something that's just really intuitive, not many settings that can get messed around because you know, when you're touring, stuff gets jangled. Carbon Copy Deluxe. I would go for the Carbon Copy, but if I'm gonna build out a live board, I like to have Tap Tempo. OC5. I'm gonna grab a freeze pedal. Um, this one is from Electric Harmonics. I'm gonna grab this Fuzz Overdrive from the homies in Beatronics. Okay, cool, we have the walrus puddles that I love. I love the Juliana. Who doesn't love a stereo chorus? I'm gonna go for the Fable too. I think I'm gonna grab an EV10. We love an EQ. Um, I'm gonna grab a 385 as well. I just played one today during a demo. I haven't really used this one, but I really loved how it sounded. I think I'm gonna also go for the Red Panda Raster. Okay, I'm gonna go for a reverb. I love the Mercury 7. That pitch vector is so fun. I am obsessed with the Ricochet and then also obsessed with the Freak Out. And last but not least, everyone needs to stay in tune. And this one by Walrus is so fun. You can upload whatever image you want to it, which is nice when you're playing and you need a little pick me up. So tuner to stay in tune. And I think that's it. This thing's getting a little bit heavy. So let's put it together. Hey everybody, what's up? Don Carr here and I'm with Yvette Young. Oh my gosh. Hey. Wow. Great to How meet fortunate you. am I? Great to meet you. Fortunate great am I. To, oh man, great to meet you. And this is Pedal Picks, right? So this mm -hmm. is your choices out of our giant pedal display, the world's largest pedal display in the store. And these are your choices that kind of mirror like your thoughts, your ideas, your workflow, your your picks, and I mean, this is quite an assortment here. This is very nice. Yeah, thanks for being accommodating with <laughs> oh, my demands. Man, of course, of course. The pedal, the pedal board's about the workflow, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it always, it's, it's always about the, how do I use them? What kind of sounds am I looking for? And so, I mean, you have to get that right. Yeah, I view it as curating like a palette of colors. Yeah. Like my background's in visual art, so right. for me, I always think about like tones and textures as different colors mm -hmm. and it's like every board like if I'm writing for a certain genre I'll have like a curate like different colors that I know will work with it and sometimes I'll just put a bunch of random stuff that I think is like cool colors and it makes me write differently. Yeah absolutely and and it's interesting too like I, I was I was watching you experiment especially uh, when you were setting the board up and man just you know the the kind of combinations of colors because one thing on its own may suggest something and then you know, you get two or three of them together. It's like, wait a minute. Okay, that's a whole different. Uh, that's a whole different set of ideas. Yeah, that's my favorite part um, yeah. is experimenting with different combinations and even just yeah. sequencing things. Yeah. Um, I feel like I don't really improvise much when I play live. My songs are pretty set, but I do improvise texturally. Yeah. And some nights I'm feeling a little ballsy, so I'll put like a little bit of extra drive on or something, or yeah. I'll, I'll use like a feedback thing to fill up space. And it, that's, I think, when experimentation and improvisation comes into place for me. Man, that is so cool. You And you are just wildly creative. And I just love your whole approach to the instrument and just your whole approach to songwriting and everything is gorgeous stuff, really, really is. And it's so unique. So, so seeing this, right, this is like, this is like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna, you know, crack the window here a little bit and look inside. What do we got going? So, um, so yeah, can you kind of 
walk us through the workflow here and tell us what uh, what what your thoughts are a little bit. Yeah, totally. So when I was picking up this stuff, I was thinking mm -hmm. usually I have a board for a, a studio board mm -hmm. where it's like if I want to record with it, and yeah. the pedals that would go on there usually are bulkier ones or ones that maybe require a little bit of like finesse to dial in. For my live board, I usually prefer more caveman knobs, like three knobs, just a one switch, nothing can go wrong. Yeah. Nothing, no setting can it flip. So right. I prefer simplicity and like streamlineness in my live board, but in a studio board, I would want something where you can get really granular with it and like go in the details and right. dial it in just right. exactly the Dig way you Dig down want. into the specifics. Totally. Yeah. But yeah, in yeah. a live setting, sometimes that's right. just harrowing because yeah. something's off. Then. Yeah, because if one thing gets off, then it's like ah, the whole thing's a mess. Yeah. Totally. So I think in this in this uh, board, I was thinking about more of like a live thing. Yeah. That's why I opted for everything with tap tempo because I feel like as someone who plays live, mm -hmm. if you can't tap in something, if I have to go down and adjust it, like that, uh, I don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That kind of takes you out of the game a little bit. That's, that's the nice thing about it because the hands are already busy so it's like we need, mm -hmm. we need to be able to get the feet in there and something a, a total aside but before we get moving here you got the right shoes for it like oh, these stompers. these clunkers i'm screwed right this is this isn't happening and i'm not getting in there you, you ever you see know? those silicon valley like toe shoes those yeah. runner shoes yep. yeah everyone is i'm from silicon valley everyone wears those but i feel like they should be rebranded re as like pedal shoes because like you can use the the toe to turn the knobs. Yeah, like to grip the knobs. Yeah. That'd be great. Like, man. how cool would it be to, like, oh, magnetically latch to something? Because, like, I can't tell you how many times something's been off live, and I'm just, oh. I'm sitting here in, like, 10-pound Doc Martens, like, trying yeah. to... Right, trying to turn one knob in the middle of something. Ugh, yeah. 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 <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I like pedal it. shoes. I, well, pedal shoes, there we go, man. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the new thing, right? So this is more like your live board, mm -hmm. right? And and yeah, performance oriented, which I can I can see that because you can like step on different things and get a different sound immediately. Yeah, that's my right? logic behind it. Yeah. And like on my board, I like to always design fail safes and I'll backups. Let's say yeah. some, I've had pedals just stop working on me and sure. I'm just like, okay, well, I have this other thing that if I turn on this other component, it's a boost and I can work as a drive if my drive is broken, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. So I feel like maybe it's years of trauma where I now think in terms of backup plans mm -hmm. <laughs> well and, but when it's live though i mean that's it you're yeah. there everybody's looking at you you're already you know it's happening you've got to make it happen somehow yeah so, and you yeah. have to be able to think quickly if like yeah. you know i put a bunch of uh, ambient stuff where it can fill in sound because sometimes things go wrong and you need to fill up space like a transition takes too long so it's nice to be able to have something looping yeah right yeah right yeah and you've got like the on the mercury you've got like the hold the you whole, know, options. I love so, yeah. any pedal with a sustained feature yeah. has my heart. Yeah. So. <laughs> nice, nice. So yeah, Royal Jelly, man, what a great, great sounding pedal. Yeah. It really um, is. Oh yeah, gosh. the first one in my chain. Yeah. Um, I always like to have fuzz like closest to me. Um, yes. I think a lot of people have that preference. I mean, I've never yeah. really tried it at the end. Maybe it's yeah. cool, but I feel like most people prefer that. I actually, I'm, um, I recently started playing with buffers mm -hmm. and it's interesting hearing like the effect that uh, fuzz has before after the buffer oh my gosh it's a whole huge debate yeah but, it is um, it is yeah most people are fuzz before the buffer yeah, but you know but that. it does a different thing and depending on the fuzz circuit because there's so many fuzz circuits out there obviously totally and sometimes yeah. you know i think the weird reaction it has can be kind of cool yeah um it yeah. all i think at the end of the day there's all these rules that we have but you don't really know until you try it. Yeah. And honestly, what good sounds good to your ear is what you should go with. Mm, I think. That's exactly it. Yeah, the rule book is just like, you know, it's a starting point. Yeah. But, I mean, but beyond that, it's like, especially if you break the rules with intention. You know, totally. it's like, yeah, this is cool. Let's do this. I don't care that it's against the rules. Let's mm -hmm. do it anyway. I think a lot of people get, get nervous to dive into the pedal world. Like, I have some friends who are like, oh, my God, there's so many ups. Because they, they hear about all these rules and things, and, it's like, already there's, like, restrictions, and mm -hmm. it kind of creates... Um, a little bit of like paralysis because they're like, I want to do things right. I, I know I'm this way. Like I want to do things by the book and I don't want to look stupid, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but I, re I remember like my aha moment was being like, dude, like it doesn't really matter. Like it's like whatever sounds good and for whatever I'm trying, the tone I'm trying to chase in here, as long as I can achieve that there. Mm -hmm, exactly. And also, also the workflow, it's like if you're going from one to the other and you got to be, you know, you got to have all of these things mm -hmm. on, you know, on command. I mean, that's yeah. really important. You know? Yeah. And that's, that's what it really is. And that's, that's what I love about any of these like 
pedal board videos like this where we break it down and talk about it, it kind of shows your, your workflow and the way you think about stuff. Totally. Um, with the Royal Jelly, uh, what I really love about it is any also anything in addition to having sustain a tap tempo, anything mm. with like a built-in EQ, mm. I'm like, thank you for letting me sculpt my tone within the pedal itself. Mm -hmm. Like being able, like I love that you can dial in how much trouble you want. I love a, yeah. a blend knob, oh my gosh. Yeah. Another right. way to my heart is a blend knob. Right. Like <laughs> sometimes you don't want it all fuzz and it's like you lose a lot of clarity like exactly. I always wanted to have like a fuzz where you can run guitar like parallel and have like mm -hmm. clean signal blended in with like the fuzz and I feel like the Royal Jelly kind of does that um, and it really cuts and it has yeah. that the um, your ability to sculpt and blend two two signals so. right right and also the man the the gain sounds are are good if you if they're cranked they're good yeah. if they're low so yeah. you know if you want more clarity like you know you do a lot of things with you know complex chords that have a lot of mm -hmm. depth to them and so you get too much gain with that and it's kind of a mess but totally you know, yeah, yeah it can get to you can find yourself in mess town real quick. yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> right right so yeah so having those having those options but again it's still you know it's just a few knobs really I yeah mean, it's still kind of simple it's still kind of it's your basic workflow aesthetic of, okay, can't be too complicated. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, and it is on the larger side, yeah. but you know, I, f I feel like it's also so many other things, so. Right, <laughs> right, yeah. Well, and then following up on the EQ thing, EB10, there yeah, we are, Yeah, right? another EQ, yeah. you can never have, yeah. you know, a few cues. <laughs> Especially because sometimes <laughs> like, you know, like for instance, my clean tone in general, I like to kind of push it have it be like really mid heavy, mm -hmm. but then like if I use something like a chorus, I like to push the bright, brighter tone, like sparkly. Mm -hmm. Sure. One of my favorite amps is a JC120, JC40. So sometimes it's nice to be able to EQ some of that muddiness out and just yeah. have it be really like sparkly. Right, right. Yeah, and take yeah, especially the mids. You know, in general, again back to the complex chord thing, and depending mm -hmm. on what you're doing, you know, sometimes it's nice to to take that out. But but also, I I know that you like. You know, obviously you're using a lot of different colors. Yeah. You know, obviously, and so EQ is one of those, one of those colors. So having more EQ options, more, more definitely, EQ options, and it's nice. fun. You know, yeah. like I, I think it's a great way to learn about tone too. Yeah. And learn about like just your your gear, your pickups, your amp by hearing the mm. differences, and like when you have the EQ on when you don't like. I, right. It's like kind of educational. It, it is. And when you play a part, especially like a part, if you're playing in a track or with a band, mm -hmm. you play a part and you go, wait a minute, how come that's not really standing out the way I want it to? And then you change it yeah. and you go, ah, oh, that's totally. it. Totally. Honestly, um, yeah. I started the buffer that I'm using. Mm -hmm. It's uh, by uh, 29 pedals. It mm -hmm. has like, diff you can boost different frequencies on it, or I guess like, I don't know if it, that's what it's doing. I'm not going to talk about impedance and sound like an idiot <laughs> on video. Someone else can do that. But I, I find that sometimes I'm like, oh, it looks like uh, my board is lacking a lot of the, the highs. And so I'll like boost that yeah. with it. And it just like changes my tone so yeah, much. Yeah, so. that's cool. That's really cool. Yeah, like a global setting at that point. Kinda. Yeah. Yeah, that's neat. That's really neat. And the uh, I see the OC5. I You know, I have never played that pedal. That mm. is, I, I know everybody knows the OC, you know, all the OC series. But yeah. I, haven't, I haven't played the 5, man. That... Uh, is it is it it does the thing obviously yeah i use it to add like width and girth mm -hmm. like when i want a little more attitude in a section i call it like the chonk pedal um and then also if you can in addition to having the low octave you can blend in like a high one mm -hmm. and i feel like that one kind of almost sounds like a pog or something yeah, yeah. cool yeah cool yeah a, and a and a different color than some of the other pitch change stuff we got going on here too totally so yeah that's that's great yeah after that uh 35. I just played it for the first time today, but I thought it was a really no kidding. Yeah, I, I just I just liked it. So that's yeah. why I put it in there. I, yeah, it's nice, yeah. man. It's just it's like it's a really smooth gain sound. I like it, but it feels organic. It feels natural, you know, and it's dynamic and responsive. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Um, I I use it for like you know if I need an extra bit of sauce for like a lead tone. It's nice to just be able to slap it on. Like in that yeah. intro thing I played, yeah, I needed right. like a little bit more assess in like a certain section, so. Very cool. Um, and then the Juliana yep. stereo chorus. Mm -hmm. We love a stereo chorus. Can't go wrong. Modulation. Can't go wrong. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's great because you can make it like like kind of as smooth or extreme as yeah. you want to. You I, know. I love like a really seasick vibrato sound. Yeah. Um, a lot of my friends say that your music's always so like wiggly because I just like can't decide. <laughs> I don't want it to be like, I want it to be like, whoa. whoa. Yeah, it's the roller coaster, <laughs> yeah. man. Take us on the ride. I yeah. like it. So I you like can it. get real wiggly sounds with that. Yes, you can. Absolutely. <laughs> and the freeze, you know, yeah. another 
classic. Yeah, I put that on there because I usually play out of like my hologram microcosm and they have mm -hmm. a button where you just like, I like to use it with the granules sec mm -hmm. um, section of the pedal and it's like you press that freeze or hold button yeah, and it just like kind of right. sustains this thing and it's a great bed for when you need to do like an ambient sure. like pad or like I mentioned earlier, when things go wrong, you need to have something filling up the awkward silence, your shoes squeaking on the stage as you frantically <laughs> yeah. troubleshoot with the issue. So to have a freeze there just kind of sets a vibe. It's yeah. great for transitions too. Like yeah. if I, I do a song where I come out of like a delay oscillation and then I have like, I freeze kind of like the oscillation going there. So it's yeah. like looping and then yeah. I go on piano and I turn it off. So it's kind of nice to just, otherwise there'd be an awkward gap where I'm right, like, Right, where you're just walking over yeah, to the piano. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's cool. That's <laughs> yeah. cool though. Yeah, and the freeze is, you know, again, it's just, it's kind of a classic, fills the need. It's nice that it's on its own because you can, then you can sort of put it anywhere in the signal chain so you can freeze or not freeze certain sounds or certain effects too. You know? Yeah, and I think I never used this pedal before. Mm -hmm. I, oh, okay. I just pulled oh, nice. it off. I'm learning about nice. it today, but what yeah. I saw is that you can, it's just additive. You just keep on yeah. like putting stuff on it. Don't mess up. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's what I hate. About yeah. Delays, about freezes. Oh, loops. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's like, God. Oh, man, you miss like, one, miss one little thing, and it's like, okay, here it comes again. Ah, oh, geez, that thing I missed. I know. Yeah. You just cringe every yeah. time. So. <laughs> right. You don't miss, so you know we're good. I I do yeah. all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, they should have pedals that like quantize pitch so if you loop it and it's like oh shoot i played out a key it'll like <laughs> it's like oh the, yeah. the wrong note detection yeah right, that'd be right, sick the wrong note <laughs> uh, that's great that's great uh fable yeah, yeah fable Man. um i sure. mentioned the microcosm i love yeah. the granular yeah um portion of it mm -hmm. and i feel like this achieves um similar textures yeah and you can even go in and, and sculpt it even more my intention was to use it alongside the freeze pedal yeah, perfect. Yeah, right, because then it kind of fills that need, you know, that of, of the uh, microcosm, which is, that's really cool. And yeah. then the, the raster. Raster. Course. I knew nothing about this particular pedal, but I'm a big fan of Red Panda. Yeah. So yeah. I think I dialed in, like, a cool modulated mm -hmm. delay sound, but I know it's it's more than that, like, the capabilities. Yeah, just uh, off stuff. the charts. But, well, I mean, all their stuff is that way, though. It's yeah. just crazy crazy super deep yeah. but but yeah but it but just great sounding absolutely you know? i feel like this pedal for me um mm. would be a studio tool just because you can go in so so detailed mm -hmm. um yeah i have the tensor and the particle at home and those oh, are yeah. on my studio board yeah right right yeah. well yeah boy talk about sculpting man oh yeah those two. endless yeah. them and chase bliss stuff too is yeah. just like crazy yeah right so, exactly yeah Okay, and uh, the, the Maris Mercury Seven. Yeah, so I'm assuming. Yeah, I'm assuming we're going back that way again. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. I love the Mercury Seven so much. Um, it's just really fun to have reverb with like a pitch vector built in. You can use it to have like an octave playing alongside you. It just sounds like mm -hmm. dark, like yeah, um, and fuller. And I like the shimmer is a really nice <sighs> touch. Just like a little bit on like a really delicate section just sounds like yeah. beautiful. And then my favorite thing is actually the infinitely plummeting sound. Like Please it's do. it's really fun. Please like do. you can get a pitch that goes all up and climbs and all the way down, but in conjunction with something like a fuzz or whatever it can sound uh, really crazy. I recently used it for like film scoring stuff where I needed something to sound like a bomb. Yeah. It just like whistles and like dives and it was perfect for that, so. Man, absolutely. And just, yeah. I just love how just incredibly gorgeous the reverb sound is on all on its own totally. just like the what is it it's called ultraverb right is it ultra plate that's right yeah, yeah. Ultra plate. I, i'm usually in cathedral oh use it yeah well they're i mean they're both just they're just awesome gorgeous I mean, yeah they're just incredibly gorgeous sound and reverbs yeah so it, it just kind of like the better button right mm -hmm. <laughs> makes everything better yeah <laughs> um whammy ricochet yeah okay so the digitech portion of my board mm -hmm. is the most fun section of my board <laughs> uh it's just great like um yeah. their pedals super easy to use mm -hmm. both the freak and the ricochet have similar interfaces where you control the onset of something on one you're controlling the gain on the other you're controlling the um return yeah so on the ricochet you can pretty much set it to any interval you want yeah. i really love okay like it's a great hack for if you don't want to jump up here but you need to jump up like a fourth or a fifth so oh, you can okay. just quickly play yeah. something and have that like repeat in another yeah right um 
key temporarily and then jump back really quick. Um, and I like doing it with the octave or the double octave and the octave and dry blend. I think those are the most like usable yeah. settings for me. I'll, I'll show you something later. Yeah, but please do. Yeah, and the freak please out, um, it's like basically, I always love the sound of guitar feedback and I did, half of me was like, it's so cool every night, I don't know what I'm gonna get. But then I was like, dang it, some nights I don't get anything. Right, or so, you don't get exactly what you want. Yeah, yeah. and so then I, my friend Pete Thorne told me about this yeah. pedal, and he was like, you can get the same feedback every single time, and you can control exactly how long it takes to vamp up, right. and then control like the level of gain you push into it. Mm -hmm. And also, there's a, the coolest part of it is that the, um, you can make it all wet, so you no know original guitar, and I think that setting swells in like an ebo almost, yeah. and it's so beautiful yeah. with like reverb with delay. It's just like whale whale songs. Exactly, and totally yeah. predictable at any volume. That's the other yes. thing. Yes, and the control freak me in me is like, yeah, thank you. And now <laughs> I can get the same feedback every night. I have this one song where I, I like raise my guitar at the end of it to like get the amp to do the feedback thing. Yeah, right. But some nights right. I just look, I have like my spinal tap moment where I have the guitar up and then it just <laughs> nothing doesn't, happens. Yeah. nothing happens. But now oh, if that boy. happens, then I'm yeah. just like, oh. Yeah, <laughs> Guess like, what? Yeah, I get no the problem. feedback no matter no what. I, I, and a pose too. That's, yeah, a, that's a good pose. Totally. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> cool. And finally, just a Very delay. Very cool. Just yeah. like the carbon copy deluxe yeah. tap tempo. Mm -hmm. Got to have it. Great um, analog sound. Amazing. Just, yeah, just yeah. so, so dark and lush and just kind of like yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. 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 The, the one of the things that I always liked about the. Uh, the, the carbon copy is, it almost seems like no matter how much of it you use, it never really feels like in the way. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I've got to talk with George Trips a little bit mm -hmm. about the, the delay, but everyone was saying that if you like uh, overpower it, you mm -hmm. can get the delays to have a little more clarity and yeah. be more pronounced, because yeah. I actually prefer that sound. Like mine is overpowered a little bit. I'm pushing it a bit more, but I don't know if he's, I mean, I think people are saying, half the people are like, it doesn't do anything, but I, I have, me and a group of friends swear by overpowering. Oh yeah, at 18 the, volts, you're gonna get more clarity out of yeah, it. Yeah, sure. it just I yeah. just way prefer it. So yeah, if you have one at home, try yeah. overpowering it. Let's hear some sounds, please. Yeah, please. Um, I guess I'll start from vanilla and then we'll go to not so vanilla, not right. so safe. Right. A little rocky road. Yeah. And then, you know. Um, okay, cool. Uh, my I use a lot of uh, chorus, so mm -hmm. in the beginning, I was running out of the Juliana. Um, Just a chorus sound, yeah. very cool. Um, and then I use it a lot with uh, delays and stuff. So let's, I'll try it with like the raster. It's just, just dreamy, you know? It, like It really is, man. That little extra modulation in the delay mm -hmm. is just perfect because it just adds that yeah. extra bit of motion to it. Cannot yeah. recommend it, you know. Yeah. So just like add yeah. a little, like my favorite way to use delay is actually as almost like a reverb because you get a little bit of like uh, melodic content in it and like mm -hmm. I guess have it really subtle but have the mix a little, I'm trying to think. If you have it like the mix really subtle but then yeah. like the, the, the repeats, the repeats yeah. really high, like yeah. I feel like it just acts like a bed. Right. You know? Like, yeah. Um, and then it's cool because the har what you're playing informs the harmonic content of the bed underneath and it's always evolving and changing. Right. And everything's a stack. Yeah. And, then, and, and if, depending on how long you have it based yes. on like how fast things are moving through mm -hmm. the song, you can kind of get that, you know, you yes. kind of get it really built and that's cool. Yeah. And it's like yeah. really cool because um, it's almost, if you're playing in the same key most of the time, yeah. then you're automatically harmonizing yourself the whole time. And right. if you run that parallel, you can have it not sound really muddy <laughs> and you can have your original guitar signal yeah. there and then have like that bed underneath yeah. as wet as you want and right. it doesn't get in the way. So. Right. Yeah. And it can be kind of as wacky sound too as you want it to be because yeah. then it is just sort of the pad. You know, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it's cool. So that's my that's basic great. sound, you know. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, I I have like a fuzz I use at home. I love using fuzz again with delay. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so let's say this is like. So, um, I have this one song, it's called Coronal. It's just kind of mm -hmm. like, I'm channeling a little bit of like Smashing Pumpkins, like yeah. 90s-ish vibes. Yeah. So I use it with like a delay. Mm 
I wonder if this is too dramatic. We'll see. Oops, sorry. I swapped it. I think <laughs> I think that every delay of the tap tempo should have the tap on the same side. Like that should be like a uniform thing. Because oh, I have a really? I have an avalanche front on my board and then I have the carbon copy and the tap. And they're on, is the, like opposite on the opposite side. side. Yeah, so we need to standardize it. this, right? Yeah, Let's, we need yeah, to standardize we it. We're okay. gonna push this. I know. That's my little complaint for today. Okay, so <laughs> adding OC5 oh, to that. It's just like wide in it. Yeah, so that's, that's like killer. a triple pedal combo that I like to do a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like combo moves. It's, it is, it yeah. is. Well, it's a stunt. I mean, it's a stunt move, total stunt guitar move. Yeah. I'm really impressed. Yeah, it's super fun. <laughs> like, uh, honestly, like, that is a tone where I, I'm always like in happy chorus dancey mode. I'm yeah. like, I'm just trying to like make yeah. everyone smile. But for some reason, when I slap on a fuzz, when I slap on a delay, I just get moody and I start playing like minor and I start experimenting outside of what I melodically usually do. So yeah. if you're feeling in a rut, just turn on some like pedal that you would never use in your life and stop trying to force your will on the pedal and like hear, this sounds like really hippie. Like no, I am from no, California. I'm, I know what you're but, saying like, though. You know, just let, let the sound dictate what comes yeah, out and really just, like serve the sound rather than, than what make, you want yeah to then right then making the sound serve you i mean mm -hmm. uh, it's it's that's one of the things that's really great about you know inspirational pedals mercury 7 is one definitely one for me yeah just hit something and listen to it and see yeah. what happens and then it, it like it it almost like it you know insinuates what you need to play almost totally mm -hmm. and it makes me chill out like i yeah. i call myself like a verbose player, because if given the opportunity, I'll like add a little detail and blip in like every moment of it. Yeah. But with something like a fuzz, or if I even want to appreciate the beauty of the Mercury 7, I have to just lay back and let the pedal play itself. Um, I think a lot of guitarists get really hyper fixated in like, I must be a good guitarist. And then that means playing is a lot of notes or, or just yeah. being very impressive. But yeah. I, I would argue that being a good guitarist is knowing when to have restraint and knowing how to really serve your tone and like mm. know when to like hold back and have tastes about when you do add those flourishes and exactly like that. yeah playing playing the music and thinking about the you know thinking about mm -hmm. the listener experience and thinking about the end result more and yeah, yeah and and something like that will allows you to do that because that because uh, you know one of the hard things about about playing probably any instrument I would imagine but certainly I know for myself playing guitar is that is that the silence you know dealing with the silence and, totally. and realizing that that's part of you know that's that's part of the thing and so when you've got something like delay or verb it kind of fills in that some of those gaps and it gives you that you know gives you that little cushion you know so the silence isn't quite so uh, quite so devastating feeling you know totally yeah. um I think a lot of people, there's like a hot take going around out there where it's yeah. like, oh, pedals are cheating if you can't play your instrument. You know, it's like, yeah. I would also like to push back and say that this is an instrument. You're playing two instruments mm -hmm. and you, you have to figure out how to play them together. Just like, you know, it's almost like this is production right here. You yeah. have the melody, you have the song, you have the mm -hmm. hook, you have the riff. This is your production. This is how you get to like really serve the story you're trying to tell and really help it come to life with color. So that's a great way yeah, to put it. That's Te like, wow, what excites that's a, me the most. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a great way to put it though, because it's like, I always look at it like the toolbox. Yeah. You know, it's like, I mean, you know, you got your hammer, you got your screwdriver, you got your, oh, wait a minute. Now, occasionally you need like your offset screwdriver and sometimes you need a three eighths wrench or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's, that, I mean, that's, you know, that's the same thing, but I, I, yours is much more poetic. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm a poet. <laughs> okay, so like, let's say, let's say I make a mistake and I'm like, oh no, I'm trying to like, or not make a mistake. Let's say like I need a transition. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Um, so like, I don't know what's going to happen. I feel like with the fable, I still can't like predict what it's going to do. And I kind of like that. Earlier I mentioned I was a control freak, but I do, I do love pedals that, that like surprise me all yeah. the time. Cause then it makes me kind of like think on the cuff and it makes me listen. I think a lot of times when we play, we stop listening and we're just on autopilot, but mm -hmm. like it takes something like, Oh, that did something really cool. I want to like, find a way to emphasize that yeah we start we focus so much on the process yeah. and not and the perfection result. yeah right exactly and when you take yeah. wh what happens is when you take control away from a control freak it stops being about like like it, it, being perfect doesn't matter anymore because you can't like yeah, the yeah right. all the factors are taken away you have no control factors so um yeah let's see what's going to happen when i do um this so yeah i just put on a random setting mm -hmm. Let's put some 
some delay on that. Uh, should I do the carbon copy or the... I don't know, I'll try this try one. Try the raster, yeah. And now I can leave and go... Play piano? <laughs> buy food and go to the bathroom. <laughs> go take a nap. And then, you know... frail moment, I love that. It made me like, you know, yeah. like pulled at my heartstrings. And there's a ricochet making a jump. So I know I did a bunch of things there, but it's just an example of like, yeah. you know, I didn't plan that or anything. I'm just like kind of, I have a general idea of what these things do. And um, I know that I wanted to start like a pad with that. I didn't even know what the pad would sound like. Exactly. Well, yeah, that's the thing. I, I, I like that you went for the raster because it kind of added that element of what the heck's yeah, going to happen here. Exactly. You know? Like less control. Yeah. And then I was yeah. like, oh, I think it, it would be cool to have something like swell in and out to add to like how emotional that section sounds and then yeah. this is ricochet is fun yeah so, oh yeah gosh, but you, yeah. you know it, even just like that first pad we generated i feel mm -hmm. like that there's so much you can do with that and you can like i love loopers because mm -hmm. it's like you can jam with yourself yeah um and i use loopers to write a lot to, to dream up parts um and also to write vocal lines oh yeah you know, sometimes you just want to like listen to it back and like yeah, huh, yeah like, hum perfect, things. perfect yeah. okay I'll, yeah. I'll do some like uh fun stuff now okay um since we did visit the ricochet and freak out unintentionally. I wasn't planning that. Um, let's talk about the ricochet. So yeah, you heard it jump pitches. Right. So, uh, okay. Dang, there's like so much I wanna show you with it. But I'll, I'll like stick to it for now. <laughs> stick to the basics for now. Yeah. Um, so like, uh, I like to use it to kind of make one section of a song jump out. Like earlier I mentioned like production and stuff and how like on guitar, sometimes it's like your melody is like, a good melody is a good melody, but with the right production on it, like you put like a pitch shifter on a certain section and like, That's more you know, change the formant yeah. and like it can sound really cool and jump out. Like I like a lot of EDM music because yeah. it's very like tight production yeah. and yeah. I feel like you can kind of simulate that with effects. Like, right. Um, so like if, if uh, I have a riff like... <laughs> And then, and um, I think I would want to actually do a little blend. So you can add the octave in addition to the dry set. Oh, okay. Just a little like that's cool extra color in that one section that's interesting okay so that's the end of the phrase and it makes mm -hmm. the end of the phrase stand out because otherwise i mean it's you know it's nice it's a nice transition a nice transition it moves back to the top of the phrase again but that man that just makes it go like wow yeah it's like sparkly yeah. for a yeah. section yeah. i would put like if i could i'd add some like shimmer reverb yeah, like, to it and stuff <laughs> yeah um i love i usually have a dd3 on my board too i don't okay. have one today but like that in conjunction with the dd3 to get like to stutter so it's like <laughs> Yeah. That's oh, a really nice. bad imitation of a DD3 <laughs> with my voice. I'm sorry. But um, yeah, okay, so let's reverse it. So uh, I mentioned okay. that the pitch yeah. can either go up. Right. So let's try an application in which the pitch goes down. Okay. I, I mentioned that I use fuzz a lot, you know, so mm -hmm. it's like, let's do. Uh, um, um, so uh, first of all, the sound by itself is like. <laughs> So I'm going to slow it down a little bit. Sounds like a bomb. <laughs> it does. It's cool, right? So That's it's like. So yeah, you can just have it in that one section. Yeah. So it was like a, an yeah. extra little detail in there. Yeah. 
um, and something that you'd usually do in like production or something. Exactly. Um, so yeah, that's one, another application of it that I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. And with the freak out, um, you know, I you can control the pitch of the feedback, which is amazing. Yeah. How can you ever do that in a room? Yeah, I'm you're not just Steve lucky, Vai. right? You're just lucky, and you guess yeah. and whatever you know. I know, yeah. like I can't play the room like a theremin, yeah, right. like. <laughs> Let's put on the raster. So yeah, that's kind of just like a fun textual tool. The way I like to use it the most is like, if I have like a, a note, I, like a, a, a song that ends on like a really epic note, I'll use it yeah. to like feedback that last note. Right, right. Or I'll have it like, um, if there's a space where my drummer's doing a fill, and you know, guitarist, so you just can't, can't not let it play. just, yeah, like, can't just let the drummer. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I can, but it's fun to like compliment which, what my drummer's doing. Um, she's doing a fill, and I'm just like a little feedback to add a little intensity in that moment. Exactly. So. It makes it crescendo a little more. Yeah, you know, the whole section just feels bigger. Mm -hmm. you know, Completely. Cool. Yeah, I don't think I did it justice today, but trust me, when it's like loud and cranked and like, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, I guess the last thing I'll show you is the Mercury Seven reverb. I mean, Please. you said it's inspiring to you it is it is definitely i just first time i heard it i just couldn't believe how like just pillowy and gorgeous the reverb sounds are in it completely yeah. um and i i also find that it never gets muddy for me right. um and i know that people at maris are like geniuses and they design like they just released the mercury x which is like a beefed up version of this with like chorus yeah i just did a video with it where we were we put it on a track actually and we wow. were messing around with snare drum and vocals and guitars and stuff it's just it's insane it's so creative yeah and it's like that for me is a studio tool because it's yeah. like all these deep diving things you can it do. is um but yeah i i guess i'll just show you know obviously everyone knows what a reverb sounds like but like it's And you can like hold it. And it's like, you know, that's very nice. Um, yeah. But my favorite pitch vector on it is the one that like plummets a lot. So you can, first of all, you can hear the one that goes up. It almost sounds like a rainbow machine. Yeah. Like, um. Let's have the mix a little higher. So it's just like, it sounds like magical like a, yeah. like a magic cave or yeah. something and then i love the one that goes down so this one is the one that i used um uh recently in the film scoring thing i did so it goes forever still going Still going, it's gonna whistle soon. I love when there's the high part starts coming in. You can hear it with fuzz. <laughs> So that could go on forever, but I don't want to use up all your footage um, with a reverb <laughs> that is tale. epic, dude. That yeah. is seriously epic. Honestly, like, if you're into film scoring and making music for, like, a specific yeah. vibe or a purpose, mm -hmm. like, it's a dream to have, to be able to have something that just immediately makes you feel like the world is falling apart underneath you. So, yeah. 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 That's Touch just, of a button. Yeah. yeah. So you can use it as a traditional reverb, but you can also just do cool sound effects. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very cool. Very, very cool. Wow. Yvette, thank you so much. Of course, thanks thank for letting you. me talk at you for so long. <laughs> we can do this all day, clearly. Yeah. Clearly we can do this all day. You need a bigger boy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's bring in more pedals. Yeah. Let's go back to the store. More pedals to talk about, right? Perfect, yeah, yeah. That's round awesome. two. <laughs> yeah, exactly, that's awesome. Thanks so much, seriously, for doing this. It's, really appreciate it. It's an honor, thank you. Thank you, and thanks everybody for watching. Um, and just so, to be clear, 
Remember, this is the pedal picks, right? So this is from the from Sweetwater's world's largest pedal display, right? Uh, right there in the retail store. And this board will actually be on display at the store. So you can come in and play it, check it out. You can make cool sounds like your vet. Gotta love that. Gotta love that. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. And, and again, if you have any questions about these pedals or any pedals, make sure to contact your Sweetwater sales engineer or check us out at sweetwater.com. Thanks.